What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Today I'm going to continue going over the Shadowlands profession changes and today's focus is tailoring. There's some familiar things from BFA as well as some big changes coming, so let's get right into it. First, let's look at what reagents you're going to use. In BFA, we had Tide Spray Linen as the Common Cloth, Deep Sea Satin as the Rare Cloth, Embroidered Deep Sea Satin as the High End Crafted Cloth, and Nylon Thread as our Vendor Reagent. Shadowlands is following the same system, so we'll have the Common Shrouded Cloth, the Rare Lightless Silk, and the Crafted Enchanted Lightless Silk. But this is where the first of the changes comes in. In BFA, tailors were able to craft embroidered deep sea satin to use in their own recipes, but in Shadowlands, enchanted lightless silk is crafted by enchanters. This means you'll need to have an enchanter of your own or you're stuck buying it all from the auction house which will certainly cut into your profits. If you want to see what else enchanters can do and how they'll be essential in the upcoming expansion, take a look at my enchanting profession review. I'll add a link in the top right corner. Heading into the crafted armor, tailors will be able to create the shrouded cloth green armor set. I want to equate it to the green tide spray linen set from BFA, but there's one very concerning difference on the public test realm right now. Right now in 8.3, the entire tide spray linen set can be equipped at level 111, making it an easy gearing option for alts as soon as they hit that level. But on the PTR, the level requirement for each piece of armor is different. The mittens can be equipped at level 11, but the pants have a level 16 requirement. The sandals have a level 17 requirement, but the hood can be equipped at level 10. Similarly, the Shadowland Shrouded Cloth set has a scaling level requirement from 50 to 57. In my mind, this makes it a lot less desirable of an option as a way of gearing alts and will severely affect the sale rate of these items. But there's a chance this is all just PTR shenanigans and an unintentional change that will be fixed before the patch hits live servers. As for blue armor, tailors can create the Shadowlay set with a minimum level requirement of 60. The eye level on this set is pretty low until you're able to make higher level crafters marks to increase their eye level, but we'll cover that a little later in the video. The Wowhead tailoring page calls out some data mined covenant specific bind on equip wear armor sets that so far have no known source. Speculation says you'll be able to learn them when you join a covenant, but it's also unknown if the armor will be covenant restricted to members of only that covenant or not. But if it is, you should put your tailor in the most popular covenant for cloth wearers to maximize the amount of potential buyers you have. Let's get to the Big Daddy Armor Set. The reason a lot of you should level up tailoring on one of your characters, the Legendary Crafted Grim Veiled Set. These items serve as the base item in Legendary Crafting and every single cloth wearer that wants to make a Legendary has to have one of these items to do it. These items are bind on equip, so you'll be able to mass craft and sell them, but I want to highlight something that can make or break your profitability. These legendary items have a ranked crafting system. Every time you craft one, you'll earn a little bit of experience towards the next rank, and at a higher rank, the item level of the crafted item increases. This creates a massive winner-take-all market where the person crafting the highest level legendary armor is the person everyone will flock to to get their base items. People want their legendaries to be as strong as possible because that's where most of their power budget is. If you're lucky enough to push your crafting rank higher than other sellers on your server, you'll see an explosion of sales. And if you're unlucky enough to fall behind, you'll see your sales wither and die as buyers favor the higher eye level pieces. The difference in ranks is quite drastic too. A rank 1 item is eye level 190, rank 2 is eye level 210, rank 3 is eye level 225, and a rank 4 crafted item is eye level 235. If you want to focus on making gold through tailoring in Shadowlands, I say your highest priority should be pushing your legendary crafting ranks as high as possible, as fast as possible. That covers all the crafted armor sets, so let's get into the optional reagents that you'll be able to add to them. Crafters marks are reagents that set the item level and acquired level of crafted pieces to specific levels. The PTR has only up to crafted mark 2s, which sets the item level to 168 and the acquired level to 60. But Wowhead has data mined up to Crafted Mark 4, which sets the item level to 200 and the required level to 60, and it seemed to be obtained by getting exalted with one of the various Shadowlands factions. Similar to the legendary ranking system, these Crafted Marks seem to be a winner-take-all system where the sellers that can push the hardest for the highest eye level pieces will see the biggest share of the sales, while those that are left behind will be fighting over scraps. 
Finally, tailoring will be able to make bandages like it always has since first aid was removed from the game. These are pretty good for leveling up your tailoring and I noticed I was able to sell deep sea bandages throughout all of BFA on a really good profit margin so while bandages won't make up the majority of your gold income through tailoring, they can still be worth keeping on the auction house. And that just about covers everything you need to know about Shadowlands tailoring. If you learned something new and liked what you saw, hit that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys next time.